everyone. Happy Monday. Let me know if you can hear me okay. The audio is coming through. All right. Yes, I can hear you. All right. Hello, Wendy. Stacy, wait just Hello. a few more minutes here for more folks to arrive. Hello, Lisette. Hope everyone is staying cool. It's like Today, what I'd like to do, guys, is uh, I want to get into our um, activity for. I want to spend one more day on what we started uh, at the end of last week. I want to take our paragraphs that we completed last Friday that we worked on in our Word online document. Two things. I'd like to, number one, add citations and references according to APA for any sentences that you included in your paragraphs that functioning like evidence, right? They're examples. Maybe they're facts, they're statistics, they're details that support your topic sentence or your, your uh, title. A title, <clears throat> anywhere from six to is a pretty good number of words to uh, stick to when you're thinking about a title. So make sure your uh, paragraph has a title. Think about adding citations when you're Looking at each of your sentences for your paragraph, determine if that sentence is either a main idea or is it is it your idea, I should say, sorry. Is it your idea or is the idea coming from some someplace else? Each sentence is either of one of two types. It's either your idea or it's an idea coming from an outside. Coming from an outside source, right, then we need a citation. Each citation needs a reference. So just as you are including references and citations, in this exercise, I ask that you include either a video or possibly a website. Maybe a maybe it's an article, a news clipping online. Include any information that you found online. Include that in your paragraph. All right. And so if it's your original idea, then you don't need, obviously. A, right. But think about the facts and the statistics. And uh, one thing about recalling, let's say that you're you're recalling a you know something that happened in the news. So let's reading an article from a newspaper, an online newspaper, and it's about some something that's going on, some current event. So let's say that you want to talk about that current event in your paper. Simply recalling generally the aspects of the story. If you're, in your own words, recalling the story, then you don't need a citation. But if you're including specific like statistics, numbers, something that's very detailed coming directly from the article, right, from the event, then you would need that source. Again, if it's something very specific, it's a number, uh, st uh, maybe it's a percentage, right? Um, it's something that's not going to be common knowledge, then you would need to include the citation. But if you're simply recalling the story and the events of the story in your own words, and that's key, needs to be in your own words, right? Because if you're using any of the text that was found, like if you're direct quoting word for word, even if it's two or three words together, all it has to be is a short phrase. If it's coming directly from some other source, then you're then you need to cite that source. You need a citation and a reference to support that. But again, a general recollection of a story in your own words, you don't need a citation. And this is something we can look at if you're not sure. If there's something like, uh, you know, some specific aspect of some information that you're getting, we can look at that and I, I can help clarify that. But keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, your paragraphs. So the first thing I'd like for you to, to do today is to add your citations. Citation, singular or plural, depends on how many sentences you are citing. 
and your references. And the second thing I'd like for you to do is to go into the comments that I left and make the changes to your text. Now, the comments, the feedback that I left in the Word document, I'm using codes. Okay, so some of these codes we've used in class, some maybe we haven't. I included a list, an error code list, and I uploaded that in Microsoft Teams. So you can take a look at that. And if you have questions about the feedback, I also included examples of citations and references for YouTube videos and TED Talks, because I know a lot of you are using or information from specific videos and uh, either from YouTube or TED, and those references and citations are a little bit different. So I included a, I took a picture and uploaded it to my, where you can see examples of YouTube and uh, TED Talk references. Okay, so again, please first, Include your citations and references, and then once you finish, is to go in and make changes. When you are changing your text, you're referring to my feedback. Please eliminate the comments as you change your text. All right. So for the rest of today, time to make those changes. I'm going to continue uh, looking through the Word document, and I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. If you guys have questions, jump in, unmute your mic. I think is the best way to, to draw my attention and um, ask away. Okay. So are there any questions before we get into it as to what we're doing today? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. You guys jump in if you have any questions. Hey Ben, it's Oscar. Um, I have a comment in my paragraph, and, uh -huh. and I, I would like to ask you about the issue because sure. uh, I, I also was insecure about writing social security because for me, it's the I didn't find the translation for seguro social, so maybe that's the right. thing. I'm not sure. Okay, let me. Let's see, are you, I'm looking for your paragraph here. Must have missed it. Uh, one second. There it is. Okay. Um, oh, I lost it. There you are. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, also, um, Oscar, I would go ahead and uh, align your text to the left as well, so we can bring all that over to the left. Mm. So, all right, so in the, if you're referring, let's see, in Mexico, to, All right, so using the term Social Security, um, it's usually referred to like in the sense of um, in the United States, it's a federal program that the government and the citizens of the country pay into. So when they retire, they get money back. So is that what you're referring to? No, I'm referring to the medical attention that. Uh, okay, uh, so I think we want to call that health care. Health care. Well, I was reading, and the the term health care can be divided 
in two words, health care or just one health care. And this means different things depending on the on if it's one word or two words. OK, let's see. Health care. Mm. Hmm. I'm used to writing it as two words, but I guess here, you know, based on what I see here, Oscar, it looks like it's just an alternative spelling. Like it, I think it means pretty much the same thing. Did you did you find some place that said that it was different? Between yes. the spelling, all right. So, what's the difference that you found? Um, that healthcare with two words is like the attention received or the attention provided by hospitals or or medical centers. Right. And healthcare, as one word, I read that it's it's more like uh, the system. I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole yeah, system. The, like the federal system? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And so in your case, you probably, let me see here. So you're saying because working class people often do not get health care. Probably two two words. No, I think you could can you used it once with two words up above, and I think you can continue using it if you're just talking about it generally. If you're not referring to the specific program. Okay. Right, and I think that. Now you could also say in this case, looking at the sentence, working class people often do not get health insurance from the businesses, which would mean they don't, you know, you, they don't get the, the insurance that's paid for either through the business, right? That, that could also be, <clears throat> you know, if, if, the, if the business is paying for the, the insurance. But again, if it's coming from a federal program, uh, actually, how much, I'm not even sure. Do and what you're trying to say here, working class people often do not get health care from the, but do they get health care from the businesses in Mexico? Or do they, well, is, uh, is that what you mean, I guess, is what I'm asking. Yeah, well, for example, if you work for a, for a, um, I don't know, uh, Wings, Wings, business right or, or chicken or whatever business uh the the your boss is is in charge to giving you insurance he, he puts your name in the list of people that can can receive medical attention if something happened when you are working in the place okay all right, and it's not part of the federal government. No, it is. It is, but so that okay. that should be free for, for the, for you if you're working in a business that that has, um, a like, deal with the with the government and with the, right. Like like what I was thinking is like if you work for a company, or a school or someplace. And you get EMS, right? Yeah, of course. Exactly. The, right, the businesses will register you, right? But for me, EMS is a federal program, right? Yep. And so, even though, of course, the business would have to, you know, register you and say that you work there and all of that, for me, that is still a federal program that's a little bit different than, let's say, like in the United States, it's 
it's uh, well, there's changes. There's there is a healthcare now, but you know, before businesses would just take out a policy and say, okay, we're going to pay you your insurance, or maybe the employees have to pay with the employer, the businesses, but together they would pay for um, for insurance for medical care that is has nothing to do with the the government. So it just depends on what you want to say there in terms of the working class <clears throat> and getting, uh, yeah, you could either say, you know, insurance, health insurance or health care. Because if you get in, if you say health insurance, it implies health care, right? <clears throat> okay, but but I'm still speaking about IMSS. It's Right. So for me, Ames is uh, health care. It's it's health. It's it's health care. Social Security is more about the federal government paying you money when you retire. It's a little bit different. You know, it's like they're paying you actual money every month uh, as uh, you know to be retired. And retired meaning you're not working anymore. You've you you put you know you're older, <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, and you're not uh, you know you're getting money from the the government. Okay, so it's just a matter of changing social security for uh, health care. Either health care or health insurance. Or health insurance. Okay. And I see that you said earlier receive health care. You, do you want to say, do you want to use two words there, opportunities to receive health care? Uh, no, no, I guess it should be two words. Okay. You see the difference there, uh, Oscar? Uh, yes, Ben, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. I don't think, uh, guys, I mentioned it earlier, but at the bottom of the page, you'll see a heading called References, and this is where you can put the references. Again, the citations and references, just as you've been doing when writing your academic essays in your writing class. If you guys have questions about APA, uh, just let me know. Ben? Yes. I want to ask you something about my paragraph. Sure, go ahead. Uh, you wrote a comment in a word that I put with quotation marks, so I want to know what is the problem, please. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Okay, so whenever you put words in parentheses <clears throat> like the word problem if, if you say the mo the, if the main quote unquote problem right sometimes we even say that right the main and then we we'll say what's in quotes we actually um, are saying that there is no problem we're actually saying quote like we're saying we're calling it a problem but really it's not in reality it's not a problem so I just want to make sure that that is that what you mean to say if that's what you mean to say that's fine but when you put it in quotes, you're saying like, OK, we're calling it a problem, but in reality, it's not. OK, I got it. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. Ben. Yeah, go ahead. Can you tell me again how to cite something from a web page in my paragraph, please? How to cite uh, something from a website. Um, okay, do you have the link to the website or can you provide it? 
yeah, I have it. If you just w want to post it right after your name there, it's fine. In my paragraph? Yeah, if you want to just uh, copy and paste the link right after your name, just so that I can, s I need to see the type of website it is. Okay. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. Mm. Okay, this is the uh, site, right? Yeah. All right, so here you see the authors. So in your sites, your citation, sorry, your citation, you're going to include only the last names, O'Brien and uh, Baria. And you can include the date 2020. Now, if you're including a direct quote, you'll also include the paragraph number where you got the quote, but that will depend on whether or not you're gonna paraphrase or if you're gonna include a direct quote. Did that answer your question? Yeah, but uh, where do I have to write the number of the paragraph before the the names of the authors or at the end or? At the end, uh-huh. So it's the author's names first. So O'Brien and Baria, comma, space, 2020, comma, space, and then the page number. Okay, thank you. And uh, sorry, you, I think you include P, include uh, the abbreviation P period, and then uh, the, I'm sorry, the uh, paragraph, not the page number, sorry. If it's a direct quote, because it's a website, you'll write out P-A-R-A, -A, like bada, period, P-A-R-A -A period, space, and then the number of the paragraph. Okay, and what about the reference? Okay, so it's a website. And so you're going to include, let me see if I have an example. I think I included a link to this presentation. I'll show you here in class, but uh, you can also access access this in uh, Microsoft Teams. But if you go to this presentation, and go towards the end where there are examples, chapter 10, reference examples, Then I would include, let's see, do, 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 without a DOI, yeah. Let's see, let's try. Okay, I would use this example. Okay, it's an article without a DOI with a non-database URL. Oh, okay. uh, well, uh, let's. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, one second. No, let me let me look at some other ones because that's not exactly it. Let me see. In fact, I'm not sure if I have any websites because we usually don't use websites. Um, when you guys get into upper level writing classes, you'll be using articles primarily. Uh, one second.
All right, I'm going to take a picture of Wendy. I'm going to upload it in Microsoft Teams. I know we did this once before, um, and I don't remember what the examples were that we did in class, so this might be different. But I'm going to send you an example of a newspaper article because uh, Reuters is a newspaper organization, and and, uh, and it's a and it's a, an example of a newspaper article. So. Oh, OK. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, I just uploaded an image, another image in Microsoft Teams, and it has an example of a newspaper article, and just below it, it has an, uh, an example of a blog. If you guys are not sure if what you're looking at is a blog versus a news, a newspaper article, uh, let me know. But usually at the top, if you can recognize some of the main, uh, you know, news paper uh, uh, newspapers that are out there. Reuters is one, you know, CNN, and you know, those are going to be your common uh, organizations, and you'll know that it's a newspaper article. So I included both. Just make sure that you're using the right, the right one. And again, you can find these in the Microsoft Teams. Let me go ahead and open this up. Okay, so here are some examples, newspaper articles, a TED Talk, YouTube video. Okay, so check those out if you need those to use the same style. Be very careful with italicized text, spacing, punctuation, capitalization. All of those details you need to, you need to pay close attention to. Just look at the example and you do the same thing with your information. Okay, so, so hopefully that will help. And for just to summarize this activity, guys, let me go back here. All right, so to conclude this activity, all right, make sure that you have a paragraph that's five to eight sentences. Try to write in uh, a unified, coherent, and cohesive paragraph using sentence connectors. Make sure that you're on topic. Um, make sure that you include at least one citation. Any of your sentences that are coming from an outside source, you'll need a citation and a reference at the bottom of the document. Make sure that you alphabetize your references. So however you, when you're inserting your references, make sure they're alphabetized by author, the author's last name. Make sure that your paragraph has a title, a six to 12 word title. And finally, make sure that you change uh, all of your text according to the, the, the feedback and that you remove the comments once you've made the changes to your paragraph. Questions about the activity? Ben, um, I just, uh, well, I made uh, an interview more than, uh, more than looking in a website because I couldn't find the, the real information about this. I interviewed uh, a nurse from the city and she told me what I wrote. So how could I? Well, did you at least find a, did you find a video? Yes, it because is a video, it, but it, it's more general. Yeah, I mean, kind if, of. If you can try to find at least one piece of information, even if it's from the video, just one piece of information that you could include in the, in the paragraph. Even if main, main the rest of the information is from the interview, because really the task was to either refer and get information from a video or or uh, a, a, some sort of website. So if you can pull just even one piece of information from either the video or some website, um, and and maybe it's it's the same thing. It's very similar to what the person, you know, that you interviewed said, right? You know, maybe it's 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 aligned with this, the same information. Um, but, you know, the paragraph needs to be in the third person. 
And so try to write it as as in the third person, not as as if you interviewed the person. Right? Okay. So I mean, yeah, just try to write it in general terms and sense that as if you got information from a, a website or the video. All righty. OK, got it. OK, any other questions, guys? Ben, what, what does TP mean? Third person. Again, uh, if you guys need to refer to the code, take a look at the code in uh, here in Microsoft Teams. Here's you have a list and third person right there. Okay, oh, so okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Ben, in the first picture that you post, what are the words could and poverty in the parenthetical citations? Are the name of the authors or what are they? Okay, so here, let me see if I can make this a little bit larger so we get this in the recording. All right, so your question is about the difference between what is a parenthetical citation and a narrative citation. My suggestion to all of you is to stick with what's called a parenthetical citation, the first example where you have the author inside the citation. The citation literally is uh, what's what's within the what what's within the parentheses. So imagine that you have you wrote out the text in your own words, but it comes from cuts, for example. So you write out the information. And then after the last word, put a space, and then in parentheses, cuts, comma, 2017. Now, in this case, in this example, what they're saying is they actually found three different sources that said the same thing. So they're, they're separating each of the sources using a semicolon. For most of you, you're only going to have one source. So if you're only going to use cuts, for example, after 2017, you're going to close the paren parentheses and that'll be and then put a period after the citation. It's very important that the citation occurs inside the sentence. OK, so that's what that would look like. The narrative citation is is like if you said according to cuts parentheses 2017 comma blah, 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 right? Or you could say cuts 2017 in parentheses, stated comma, right? Or you could just say uh, cuts mention that and you put it in your own words, but you're still <clears throat> focusing more on the author, right? Generally speaking, it's better to focus more on the, on the concepts rather than the author. So again, I would suggest that you use the par parenthetical citation for all, all of your citations. And I think this goes for your writing class as well. All right, that's uh, generally uh, the best way to look at, uh, you know, writing and when you're citing. Okay, does that answer your question, uh, Lisa? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? Again, guys, if you have any questions later today, if something comes up while you're finalizing this task, send me a message via chat. I usually am checking periodically throughout the day, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with uh, with your with uh, with some information. Okay. All right. If there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and stop there, guys, and um, we'll uh, continue tomorrow. We'll introduce a new topic. And we'll begin a new activity starting tomorrow. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Be safe. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank See you. you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. bye.